about how many know Jesus is the Son of Man. He's the Son of God, but he's also the Son of Man. Now, this teaching today, uh, it, it does mess with your mind a lot, meaning you can't hear this with religious ears. You can't hear this with just mental assent or mental process alone. This is much bigger than that. You have to hear it also with your heart and you have to take the Bible for what it says because it's gonna contradict some things in your mind, but it's in the Bible, I promise you, and it's gonna take your life to a whole nother level. Somebody say amen to that. All right, say this with me. He became one of us so we could become like him. Amen. Amen. All right, so number one, say this with me. He became unrighteous like me so I could become his righteousness. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, 20, and 21. Read with me. Say, if anyone, what does anyone mean? Say, that's everybody here. Everybody, everybody, everybody. Every person here. It, nobody's exempt. Say, anyone. Is in Christ. All right. So wave at me if you are a born-again Christian. Let me see your hand. Okay. And the, all right. All right. Put your hand down. That's some, most of you. Okay. Some of you are not. We'll get that taken care of in Jesus' name today. If anyone is in Christ. Say, in Christ. Okay. Say, say he or she is a new creation. It literally means a new species of being that never existed before. You got that? And the old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now, I'm 5'5". Five five. When I got born again, and I looked in the mirror, I was still five five. I didn't grow or shrink. I have an ugly tattoo right here. You can't see it. In Jesus' name, you never will. That's why I tell the young people, don't get tattoos. Like, why, Pastor? It's not in the Bible. Well, the Bible says it shouldn't get them, but even if the Bible didn't say it, don't get it because you get older and the elasticity on your skin changes. I know you don't believe it now, but trust me. Because you're going to have a smile now, clown, but by the time you're like 65, it's going to be crying later. It's going to be like supernatural transformation. So I said, don't do it. Because it was cool when you were 20. But at 42, 53, and 61, people are like, why did you do that to yourself? Like, I promised you it looked cool 30 years ago. <laughs> so if you become a new creation, what changed? What's new? All right. Say, ask your neighbor, so what's new? I think that's what, why a lot of people don't come to Christ because somebody's talking about, I go to church, and then the family says, so what's new? We're going we're gonna to we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna build a case here. Okay. I'm committed to teach you in the, in the next couple of months, so I, I really felt that. Okay. Okay. So, say, so what's new? Tell you what's new. Now, tell them, I'm new. I'm new. Well, wait a minute. You're still 5'5", five five, Jay? You're still a Mexican. Not a Mexican. Come on now. Oh, well, whatever. Okay. Well, that was a joke. All right, now. What's new? What's new? I'm new in my spirit. Which is the most important part of you. Because this body gets old and dies, 
but the real you will live forever. There was a pastor friend of mine. I'm not going to rush, by the way. So if we only get, if we get to like a half a point, I, I, I'm going to teach. So I had this pastor friend of mine, and this guy was super buffed. He was like buff, 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 buff. And he, he had like a gym in his house and everything. He's like, Phew. and one day he was working out, and he's all buffed. And he looks in the mirror, and he sees this guy who's like all sucked up, like starving to death. But it's his face. And he goes, what the heck? And the Lord says, that's what you really look like. See, people are depressed mainly because their spirit is neglected. People are unfulfilled in life, in marriage, in relationship, because it's not their spouse's fault. It's their fault. And they're looking for something from a person. That's why they have affairs. But what you need won't come from a man. Let me teach. It only comes from God. And the Lord says, look at you're all buffed in your body, but you've neglected your spirit as a pastor. So obviously he changed, and he learned how to build up and develop his spirit. Because a lot of people get born again, but they don't know how to develop their spirit, and they don't know how to renew their mind. Therefore, even though the greatest miracle on the earth has taken place in them, no one ever sees it because they never worked out their salvation with fear and trembling. <laughs> Clap like you're going to work out your salvation. So, can I give you another story that will help you and then we'll go in? Say, don't rush, Pastor. We'll just pick it up next week. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. So, one time, um, I don't speak Spanish, don't judge me, sad, I know, but one time, I would, my pastor had ran a church to the Spanish service, and the pastor Mundo would come and have a service there like at three in the afternoon, and I would go, I didn't understand Spanish, but I would go because there was something special there, and it's, it was a Pentecostal church. So, you know, some of you don't know about that, but like, you know, we do like an hour and a half, two hour service, and some of you are like all wore out. You didn't start preaching for like three, four hours. You sang for three hours, the same song. I por de, por de, si me, I por de, uh, uh. All backsliding up in here. Come on, Lord brought you home. Yeah, no, really. And I'd sit there and I, so I can follow a little rhythm. And then, he, and then he'd start preaching, fiery. I don't understand anything he said. A little bit. But I was like into him because he was strong. And then he, then he would call, altar call, pray for people. That was my cue. Ven aquí, come on. See. Sí. And I would run to the front. Because that guy has something on him. You got to be able to know when people have something on him. Now, this guy has something on him. So he, he starts praying, and he starts one end, and he'd come. You know, like this. And he comes to me, and the Bible says it this way. You shall receive power. And I look up the word power in the original Greek, and it means dynamite, explosive. That's all I can explain it as. When he prayed for me, he spit to Santo. That's all I remember. <laughs> and it was like somebody put a M80. What's the bigger one? Some of you know about those. M1000, huh? Lord have mercy. Okay. 
It was like that, and it went boom, like a flash, and I was down. Now, in a Pentecostal church, like, you know, we have people who catch people. You ain't got no catcher. If you fall and got hurt, that was, the, that was you in the flesh. Come on, somebody. I hit the deck, boom, didn't feel a thing. I'm laid out, and, and, and I don't, I don't want to have to say I swear or this really happened because I, I'm beyond that now. I know what happened to me. That's it. I'm out. My spirit comes right out of my body, halfway. Just like I'm laying like this, so it comes this way. And a few things blew me away. The first thing was I, my, my body was looking at my spirit, freaking out, screaming. <laughs> and I look over this way, and the body's out. I look over this way, everyone's laid out, and he's still praying. <laughs> and then I look at my spirit, and I notice two things. First, my spirit was black. That's why I always knew I have a black part of me. Come on, somebody. I got soul, dog. Come on. And I was like, what? But it wasn't black like this. It was like, like platinum. I was like platinum and like shiny, like, man, I, I, and then the second thing I noticed, I was big. I was like big, like big, everything about me, like just, wow. I was smooth. Come on, somebody. I'm like, Lord, that's what I'm going to look like in heaven. Chow! Come on, somebody. See, surge in the spirit, we can be big, man. And then it came right back in my body, and then I never was the same. Because I realized that was the real me I was looking at. And that was the person I had to take care of. And then I was going to spend the rest of my life changing the way I think so I could think the way God sees me. Come on, clap. Clap like we understand things. Come on, clap like you understand some things. Okay. Can we go back to the word of God now? Let's go. Say, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new what? That means my spirit, if you would have saw my spirit before I was in Christ, you would have found my spirit and you would have found some other spirits. <laughs> and it wouldn't have been nice at all. It would have been dead because I was dead in the spirit realm. But once I got saved, I became a new creation. And in God's mind, all things are gone. They passed away. And everything has become brand new. Shout like you are brand new. Now, now that's why we baptize people today. That This is all part of you understanding you're new now. That's all part of it. Because the devil will, what, bring up what you did last summer. He'll bring up, man, you smoked a, a joint of cigar yesterday or three years ago, whatever. You did this and you did that. And look at you. You, should, you just might as well quit. And you're never going to change. In reality, you've already changed. Oh, I'm going to get too heavy. I'm going to get too heavy. But we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll, but that's why we say in your mind, you leave everything in that water. Because when you come out and the devil says, hey, you remember what you did when this? You say, no, no, devil. I'm new in Christ. I left it in the water. I'm a new creation. You can't bring up that. And you have to stay away from people who want to bring up your past. Or judge you based on what you were. That's why many times when you get saved, God has to surround you with new people who see you the way God sees you, not the way you used to be. Because I'm not who I used to be. You good? All right, say, now we are representatives for Christ. As though God were pleading through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be restored to God. Verse 21. Now here's the image we're going to bring up. 
I want you to say this with me out loud. Say, for he made him. So who's he in this text? God the Father. God the Father made him. Who's him? Jesus, who knew no sin. Did Jesus sin? No. Can you put that up? Go ahead. There we go. God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us. That we might be made the righteousness of him. Leave it there. I need you to get a hold of this. These are heavy words. Right there on the cross, he is taking my sin, my failure, my mistakes, my addictions, my, my past, my pain, my scars, all the failure. He's taking it for me, and he's becoming me. So what he is, I can become. We could go one step further, and I'm going to teach this after Easter, oh, something called true prosperity. Because at this moment, if you have somebody who's sinning, and you sin, and you sin, and you sin, what's the result of sin? Curses come. The curse will come into somebody's life. So not only is he taking my sin, and he's becoming my sin, now the Bible says, the Bible says, Cursed is Christ because he hung on the cross. So not only is he taking and becoming my sin, he's becoming my curse. That means every generational curse that is in the Lozano family has been broken because he broke it on that cross. Shout like he became you so you can become like him. He dies in this condition. This condition. He dies in this condition. It's so bad that at one point he literally says to his father, why, and I'll talk to you more about this next week, why did you forsake me? Well, of course the God we serve has to forsake him because he's become, he's become our sin. He's paying our price. Then he breathes his last in this condition. In this condition, he never sinned. He never made a mistake. He never blew it. He never did any of it, yet he's taking it as a sacrifice so you'll never have to pay this price for your sin or mine. He pays this price, and then what happens? He's, he's, he, he, this is who he is. Then at this point, this sin curse gives him permission to go to hell. This is the genius of God. The devil's like, I got him. He's here. But the, the problem was the devil's so dumb, all he knows is kill, still destroy, kill, still destroy. He don't realize he never, he never sinned. He just became it as a sacrifice. But our sin gave him the permission to go into the lower parts of the earth and there pay your price. Pay my price. So when you die and I die as a believer, our spirit doesn't go down. Our spirit can go straight up. Because when he was in hell, the scripture says he defeated death, hell, and the grave. Come on, clap like this is good. 